It's a kettle, not just any kettle, but the finest pink rubber kettle from China. I mean, everything's made in China, but this is a direct import, so it may have special, special features inside. Can you even see inside here? I'll shine a light down into it. Inside we have a stainless steel looking boiling plate. It does say 304. Whether that means uh, 304 stainless steel or something else, I don't really know. Uh, it's rated about 600 watts, but you know what? Let's just fill it with water and we'll boil it. I'm just going to fill it with water right now. One moment, please. The water has been put in. I've put in 500 milliliters or half a liter. It is up to just below the max mark here. Let's plug it in and see how long it takes to boil. So I'm going to plug this into my little Chinese uh, test meter here. And then there's a switch on the side. And at the same time as I press the switch, I'm going to start a timer. So the power, it says 720 watts. It said 600 watts, but 720 is good. Is it a PTC element? I don't think it is a PTC element. I think it is an actual heat element. Right, tell you what, uh, I shall let this come up to temperature. And apparently when it comes up to temperature, it doesn't cut off. They say if you're traveling and you go to a very high, high altitude where water boils sooner, uh, it may not stop boiling because it is purely thermal that it will cut in and out once it reaches uh, the desired temperature. Right, tell you what, since this is literally waiting for a pot to boil, I shall uh, pause the video and come back once it has boiled. One moment, please. And the result, it took about five minutes to boil 500 millilitres of water, so say roughly one minute per 100 millilitres. So probably just three minutes if you made a single cup in this. Uh, it started boiling, steam came out as you'd expect, and then the cutout kicked in. So it works. That's good. Let's move this stuff out of the way. And I'll pour the water out of this, and then we shall open this thing. But first, before we do that, let's see if it feels wobbly. Is it? Does it feel robust, but now it's full of boiling water? Uh, it does. It doesn't feel too bad. It feels like you could tip that without it suddenly going rubbery and gadoying and doing stuff. Anyway, we'll also check out this cable because there's always a suspicion that the cable with these import products may not be up to standard. This is a thing if you use it with another product that draws more power. Right, tell you what, I'll pause while I pour this away and then we'll explore it. One moment, please. This is very hot, so I'll let it cool down, and while it's cooling down, well, it's a kettle, so yes, it is hot. Let's explore the cable. So let's just lop uh, this cable off. The cable does say, well, it's embossed with uh, 0.75 millimeter. Two core 0.75 millimeter. Do you trust that? Do you trust any? Oh, God, no. Look at the size of the cores in that, right? Tell you what, let's uh, nibble, nibble, nibble through this. I should have got a lighter handy for the aluminium test. I think this is very cheap and nasty cable, but we've got other stuff to compare it to. Here it is. Uh, let's compare it to actual 0.75 millimeter, which looks a lot thicker. Let's strip them. I should just strip them with the schnips. It does look very coppery. Oh, it doesn't feel right though, does it? Oh, it feels very, very rigid. Let's uh, strip some of this. Feels better. Uh, right, tell you what, uh, I'll just grab the uh, lighter and we'll do the flame test. I have the lighter. Let's do the flame test and see. We'll try it on the real copper first. So I shall hold a flame under the real copper. I'll just pull a couple of strands out. And it discolors. It goes kind of like it glows. Oh, it's uh, actually melted down a bit, but it's not shriveling up like the... Uh, the aluminium normally does. Let's pull a couple of strands out of this and do the same flame test. I should zoom down this, shouldn't I? I should zoom down it. Flame test. And it just instantly just absolutely just shrivels up and goes limp. So this is just copper coated aluminium, isn't it? Or some other fakery. Compare the two of them. See, that one's just shriveled and gone limp. This one has held its shape, though it has melted back a bit with the heat. Uh, right, so not really necessarily the very best cable, not super current, current carrying excellence here. Okay, well, that was predictable. 
that's fine. It's what we've come to expect. When you get leads with Chinese products, I do recommend throwing them in the bin and getting reputable leads from a reputable source. In the UK, that would be something like RS Components, Rapid Electronics, CPC, the big suppliers who have a, a reputation to protect. This thing is cooler now. I'll still get water everywhere, won't I? There are three screws under here. Let's bring in a driver and remove those screws and see what it reveals. I would guess they're maybe into the stainless steel heater plate in the bottom. If it is stainless steel. It just feels like they're spinning, to be honest. I'm sure they are coming out. Oh, they are quite long. Oh, they're very long. Oh, with a little rubber bung. A little rubber bung. This is where I could have got my new cordless driver and done this really quickly, but I didn't, did I? No. I really have to start doing that. Is this going to come off? Is there something else I should know? Is there some secret thing holding this in place? I should just keep unscrewing. Just in case. Any better? Oh, that is better. Oh, they are quite long. They are quite long. What is this going to reveal? It's going to reveal something very simple. It's going to reveal the incoming supply, which does have an earth connection. Uh, shame that it's a double pole plug. Uh, but for reference, because of this metal ring, which is kind of makes it important, really, uh, you, if you use an earth cable, there is an earth wire going onto the chassis here, the metal components. Uh, the little uh, connector at the side does go through this switch with its little neon indicator. I didn't even notice the neon indicator, but it's got three connections, so there will be a neon indicator. And then one leg goes to the heating element, and the other leg goes to the thermostatic switch. Well, actually, the thermostatic switch goes via this to the... So the little indicator light go off as well, by the look of it. Uh, that's very straightforward. It's not bad. It's a fairly solid little thing down here. And how have they fastened the rubber into it? Have they basically put two... Oh, I think they've actually crimped two layers together with the rubber trapped in between them. It looks like it. So it is physically crimped in. That's interesting. It doesn't seem to be coming out too easily, which is good. So there we have it. Uh, it is more or less what I expected, the heater plate with the heater physically uh, fused onto that. It's good that it's earth. I wasn't expecting that. Well, it's, it would be nicer if they actually supplied the earth cable, but, but you get what you get. Uh, so there we go, the, the pink rubber kettle. To all intents and purposes, it's not too bad. It seems quite a logical design. And the uh, the thermal cutout did trip just after the water started boiling, so it is fairly close to the correct temperature. That's pretty good. So there we have it. Uh, so if you do get one of these, I don't necessarily recommend you get one of these, but if you do get one of these, uh, get yourself a three-core proper, three-core flex. If you have, if you live in an area with grounded sockets, and either way, just basically change the flex for a new one anyway, because this is just not really great. It's not going to handle up to fault conditions very well. But there we have it. The Chinese rubber kettle, the pink rubber kettle. I should have demonstrated that to fold it back down, you basically just fold it in like this, and you just smooch it in, and it just compresses back down to a smaller size for travel, presumably. But that's it. The rubber kettle from China. It's not too bad.